Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, this is a new week and this is actually the last week in the month of August. Now, the, the year 2024 is going so fast. And listen to me, that's exactly how God's purpose for your life is coming to pass. Oh, Pastor Atuba, I've not seen anything yet this year. You don't know what God is doing. But as long as you trust in him, eventually you would see the goodness of God. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Just like the Lord have commanded us to do on this broadcast. Now the Lord commanded us to do it and that's why we do it. And guess what? It's for your good. Are you ready? Join me right now and say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for what he's doing. And I also appreciate you all for taking time to watch this broadcast. And those of you who share, and those of you who have subscribed to our YouTube channel, I want to appreciate you today. And you see, the Bible says God gave his word and great is a company that published it. Especially those of you that share this broadcast. You are part of the company that published it. And my prayer for you every day is that the Lord will remember you and do you good. Praise God. I want to share something. You know, we've been talking about the knowledge of God. But I woke up this morning with a deep thought in my spirit. And there are, there are certain things that the Lord have been saying to me consistently in the past few days. And this morning I began to get a clearer picture of what he's talking about. The Lord have been telling me that, look, get ready and set your heart to seek and receive the mercy of God. Now, we have a program coming up this week, Thursday. It's a worship program. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a worship program the Lord have commanded us to start doing. And it's titled Sweet Incense. Now, this week, Thursday, we're going to be having, uh, having the one for this month, uh, for this month uh, in Abuja, the city of Abuja. We're going to be having it for this month. On Thursday, the 29th by 6 p.m. I'm sure the the address and the other information they are showing on your screen. Now, while we're preparing for that meeting, the Lord began to talk to me and said, pray for mercy. Pray for mercy. You know, and you know, when God instructs you, first, you would, um, because you want to act like you know, okay, pray for mercy. Okay, Lord, I pray for mercy for everyone that is attending. But then the way the Lord began to talk to me, more about mercy look set your heart towards mercy set your heart towards mercy now this morning i began to link up what he's been saying to me when he gave the instruction from for these meetings okay last month he said look through these meetings you're going to bring up a sound to me that i would love to hear okay and then the lord came and began to say pray for mercy pray for mercy and so we began to pray for mercy, you know, anytime I'm praying, my heart just goes towards mercy. And so while I was meditating on that this morning, the word of the Lord came to me. He said, look, the reason I asked you to bring a sound to me is so that I will release my mercy, not just on your life, but on the earth. Now, I want you to understand something with God. All God needs is a man, okay? But in, then you see, when God wants, now all God needs to do his own part is just a man. Now, when God takes an action, it will affect everybody. You know, you know what I mean by that? It's a lot of people will be affected by one action that God takes. Now, when God began to speak of his mercy, and then God began to tell me, look, this, the reason I asked you for this is to bring up a sound that I will like. Is because the days ahead are days that you are going to really need 
my mercy, not just for your life, but even on the earth. Now listen to me. The month of September is the month that we will really, really need the mercy of God. And when I mean the mercy of God, you know, sometimes when, you say, when people hear words like mercy, they think about, oh, the wrong that I have done. You understand what I'm talking about? But it's, mercy is beyond the wrong that you have done. Mercy also deals with you that think you have been so correct and accurate and right. But you see, before God, your actions stands as foolishness. Oh, yes. You know, the scripture says our righteousness is like filthy rags. You know, we, 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 no one will stand if you want to count righteousness. So beyond what we think we do right or wrong, listen to me, God's actions. Now he's God and his actions, his thoughts supersedes everything we're going to think or do. But then remember that his thoughts concerning us, they are good. But most times we don't walk hand in hand with him to achieve his thoughts. And because we don't walk hand in hand to achieve his thoughts, we, 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 we go astray. Okay? Now you remember examples in scripture. The children of Israel came to Samuel and they said, give us a king like the other nations. And Samuel was alarmed. They were like, no, hey, why don't you? They said, no, we want a king. And Samuel went before the Lord. And, and the Lord says, it's okay. It's not you they have rejected. They have rejected me. And God never opposed their request. He told Samuel, give them a king. But warn them that this is how the king they are asking for is going to be. Now, I want you to think for a moment. The people brought the request before God. Now, if you study Moses, Moses being a prophet and the leader who brought them, Moses was instrumental in the forming of this nation of Israel and their laws. So in doing so, he also gave them prophecies, okay? Now, Moses had told them that a time is going to come when you are going to need a king. Now, he was speaking in prophecy. Then he began to give them counsel about the kind of king they will choose. Okay. Now, Moses had given that prophecy. Now, this is Samuel, years after Moses had gone. I want you to follow something here. And then, they came to Samuel. Now, they didn't just wake up and come to Samuel. They noticed that Samuel was an old man. And they noticed also that his sons were badly behaved. So they thought to, amongst themselves, they said, look, if Samuel dies, who, who's going to be in charge? Most likely is one of these young men. They are going to claim the office of the prophets. See? Now, what they did not realize first and foremost is that Eli was in the same position. And God raised up a king, a, a prophet under Eli that was not his son, any of his sons. Okay? So, they forget that God always has his plan. But because of the behavior of the sons of Samuel, they thought among themselves, we can never have one of these ones lead us. Because then, the, the, the prophet was also their leader. So he gives them direction, okay? More like he, he acted like a king and also a prophet. Not kingly, kingly, but you know what I mean by it. he gave them direction, okay? He stood up for them. So when they made that request, it sounded genuine based on the circumstances, okay? But then they went before the Lord and, and God says, you know what? Give them. But tell them this is how the king they are asking for is going to be. Now don't forget, Moses had told them but to look out for a king. So how come now when they were requesting for a king, why didn't God give them the kind of king that Moses spoke about? I want you to follow here now. Because sometimes we, we get into things in life. That's why I always tell you the knowledge of God is so important. If you understand the person of God, if you understand the person of God, if it will affect your decision making, your day-to-day -day living. Yes. It will affect your choices. So when we say, go for the knowledge of God, even Solomon said, get wisdom. 
Now, when he was saying get wisdom, what is wisdom? Wisdom is simply the Holy Spirit. Get the Holy Spirit. That's what he was saying. Yes, get him. Get the word of God because that's what the Holy Spirit offers you. He offers you the word of God. So you can also actually say the wisdom of God is the word of God. So when Solomon said, get wisdom in all you're getting, get understanding. Don't just say, I've heard God. Understand what God is saying. So we find God giving them a king or telling them it's okay, you can have a king. But then this is how the king is going to behave. The king is going to behave like every other king behaves in all the other parts of the world. He's going to take your land. He's going to take the best of the land. He's going to make you tax. He's going to make you pay tax. He's going to do all these things. Samuel told them all these things. And then they say, yes, yeah, even do. Just give us a king. Okay. Now, I said something earlier. I said, why didn't God give them a king that fits the description of Moses? Moses had prophesied to them already. This is simply because, yes, Moses had prophesied that the time will come when they will have a king reign over them. But then they didn't wait for God to determine that time. They quickly rushed. We want a king like the other nations. So at this time, according to the scheme of things with God, the king was not ready yet. It was not time for them to have a king. But they running, and then when God even gave the counsel, they could have examined the counsel of God and asked themselves, is this the kind of king we want? If the answer was no, then they would have said, okay, you know what? So what is God's plan for us next after you? That's the same impatience that a lot of people have manifested in their lives and it has cost them a whole lot. I want to marry this person for whatever reason. Oh, um, he has been my helper since many years now. Or she's the most beautiful girl or whatever. Oh, you know, whatever you think. And then you go before the Lord or you go before, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, we seek counsel. I even hear people say, God does not give wives. I don't know where these people get their, their understanding from, sincerely speaking. I, 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 I wonder when, when they say things like that. You don't, you don't use the generality of people or to answer their general question and tell a lie. Does God give wives? Yes, he gives. If you seek, you will find. If you seek the one God gives, you will find. But if you want to go with the general public, you want to argue with God. And sometimes if you want to, if God knows you will not even listen to him, why would he give you something you will not listen to him about? Okay. If you study Jeremiah, he said, even to Jeremiah, look, I will answer these people according to the idol that is in their hearts. So what does that tell you? That tells you that God is going to tell a lie to them. See, that brings me to, to this point, you know, um, these arguments about, you know, how, 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 how sometimes we, we just need to patiently follow the word of the Lord. You know, people argue about a statement, what God cannot do does not exist. You hear people talk about that. They're like, oh, it, it's not scriptural. Who told you it's not scriptural? It's 100% scriptural. What God cannot do does not exist exists is as true as it stands it doesn't even need any explanation why he is god don't you understand you know people go eh, you can't say what god does not do does not because god cannot lie who told you god cannot lie oh but that guy is, so so do you mean god will lie god will not lie does not mean god cannot lie See, we're talking about ability. <laughs> Even Jesus said with God, nothing shall be impossible. No, he said with God, all things are possible. Now, it's in the same light that that statement, what God cannot do, does not exist. <laughs> See, what God cannot do speaks of his ability. There is nothing God cannot do. There is, I don't know any other wisdom anybody wants to express against that thought. But the truth is, there is nothing God cannot do. Nothing. 
nothing. I said nothing. So now I, I was saying something that brought me to remember this. You know, so God can never lie. Okay. So God said to Jeremiah that when these people come, I'm going to answer them according to the idol of their heart. Now, if God answers you according to the idol in your heart, what is that? What, what result are you going to get? You're going to get a lie. So, are you saying God told a lie? There is nothing God cannot do. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now, uh, David speaking, I think in Psalm 18. Is it Psalm 18 or Psalm 18? Psalm 118 or Psalm, oh, Psalm 18. He says, to the merciful, God will show himself merciful. Okay? To the, to the upright, God will show himself upright. Then he said to the forward, that's to the Mago Mago person, you know how we say it here in Nigeria, God will show himself forward. You don't know God, that's your problem. You don't know God. Oh, God does not destroy. Who told you God does not destroy? I mean, we see footprints everywhere in scriptures of God's actions against men that cause destruction. Now, you see, it's because of their sins. So, so who did the destruction? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't think God destroyed. He, he actually sent the devil to go destroy. Okay, so he sent the devil to go destroy. What was his intention? No, what was his intention? You see, if you don't understand God, Keep quiet and try to understand him. You can't defend him with your little understanding of him. He will surprise you. Every revelation we speak of God, if you want to come out publicly to talk about God's revelation, don't talk about what you have studied. Talk about the experience you have had with him and the knowledge that experience brought to you. Leave it like that. Now, when another person brings his own experience, what we now do is compare notes. And when we, we're not comparing notes to argue, no, it's not God. No, it's not God. See, that's why experiences must be true. Okay? And that's why the that's why God just He 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 made it possible that we have a material like the Bible. The Bible is full of experiences that are true. Okay. Now, when we compare these experiences, we begin to understand the character and the nature of God. But then the best way is not even by studying. I've told you this before. And I'm not saying it because I don't study. I study a lot. I have studied this book. I comment. I tell people that's what I spend my life doing. I have studied this book and I studied it for myself, not to preach, not to teach. I studied it for myself. I wanted to understand the character of God. So when I speak of the character of God, I have a lot to tell you. So I said, studying will not do it. It's only the Holy Spirit that will bring you into the place of knowledge and understanding. So when he does, he uses experiences of people and yourself to teach you. Your own part is that when you see an experience, you learn to run to him and ask him those questions. Then he will tell you, son, that's not what I meant. This is what I meant. See? So you need to understand these things. If the Holy Spirit is not involved in teaching you, if the Holy Spirit is not involved in guiding you, you see this, this book has been used by many as an academic material. But hear me, it's not an academic material. It's a material for living. It's a material to help you make proper choices that will help the outcome of your life. But then the thing about that chose choices is if the Holy Spirit is not there, if the Holy Spirit is not involved in your life, I'm sorry to tell you, you can study everything you need to study. You will still end up in error. Yes. Don't base your revelation on your 
academics. Don't base your revelation on how many scriptures you know about this matter. That's a classwork revelation. That's not spiritual revelation. I was sharing a, a few days ago, you know, in our, in our meeting, and I said, you know, when people say, let's reason this thing out, we need to find out the basis or the foundation of your reasoning. See? What's the foundation of your reason? That's what will tell if we can reason at all. So saying let's reason this thing out is not enough. These individuals that want to reason this thing out, we need to find out what is the foundation on what stand is their reasoning or their thinking faculties. Okay? So I can say, let's reason this out. And we're talking about worldly stands, okay? I can say, let's reason this out. And we're thinking of spiritual stands. Even in spiritual things, we reason. We are not fools to just say, oh, God said, mm, okay, if God said it, then let's go. We reason things out. God wants you to reason things out. My time is up, praise God. But listen, I have a lot to share with you this week. Because of the month we're stepping into. Don't miss tomorrow's broadcast. I pray that the love of God will surround your heart. And God will even from this day begin to manifest and show mercy in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.